I would like to make a few remarks uh, before I uh, start with the presentation. Uh, first of all, uh, the uh, presentation is based on two papers published in uh, uh, 2020 by the Policy Support Unit at the APEC Secretariat. Uh, one is the theme chapter of the APEC Regional Trend Analysis in May 2020, uh, named What Goes Around Comes Around, Pivoting to a Circular Economy. And the second paper is the policy brief uh, number 30, uh, published in January 2020, by also by the Policy Support Unit, uh, named Circular Economy, Don't Let Waste Go to Waste. And the two, these two papers can be accessible online, among other publications, by APEC and the Policy Support on uh, apec.org under publications. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, so uh, previous uh, speakers have touched on waste as well as the, um, the process of our circular economy, uh, be it plastic or other types of waste. So this presentation will again attempt to uh, look at the waste crisis and uh, consider the transformation to a circular economy as a response to uh, the growing waste crisis. Uh, it, will, uh, it will present the benefits uh, of circular practices in ensuring almost zero waste generation and discuss policies to enable the smooth adoption uh, of circular economy principles in the area. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, so just a little bit of the background. The APEC uh, region has not been spared from the impacts of um, the waste crisis and leaders of the region have repeatedly voiced their concerns um, over the issue. Uh, they identified the need for better waste uh, management uh, and called for more work in this area in their um, 2015 and 2016 declarations. And similarly, concerns for better management of resources and um, management of resources um, were echoed in the 2017 APEC leaders declaration. And more recently, um, APEC, the APEC Chile uh, 2019's priority on sustainable growth uh, has looked into marine debris prevention and reduction with a specific focus on plastics. Um, and uh, at the uh, host, uh, as the host economy of 2020, Malaysia also recognized the concept of a uh, circular economy as a sub priority within their driving innova uh, innovative sustainability uh, priority pillar. So, this work within APEC is an indication um, of the importance of uh, a regional approach in addressing the waste crisis and helps explain uh, how transitioning to a circular economy can aid in um, improving the waste crisis and pursuing sustainable growth. Next, please. Uh, so the waste crisis picture um, globally, as well as in APEC, is as seen from the slide. Uh, waste, um, as um, uh, defined in, in this presentation, as uh, any product or material, that is disposed in the process of consumption and production and may include solid, uh, liquid, gases, um, recycle, recyclable and organic waste. Waste generation um, is a major global problem that is worsening by the day. Uh, growing population, rising affluence uh, and rapid urbanization unsupported by proper waste management systems uh, has driven this global waste crisis and the World Bank estimates that annual global uh, solid waste generation will rise by 69% uh, between uh, from 2 billion tons in 2016 to 3.4 billion tons in 2015. And high income economies contribute one third of global waste, although they account for only 16% of the world population. On the other hand, uh, global uh, lower income economies generate increasingly more waste per person per capita, an issue that is particularly um, worsened by inefficient 
waste management uh, systems and lack of awareness. Next slide, please. Uh, while APEC economies are responsible uh, for a large share of solid waste, that is 43% um, of global solid waste um, in 2016, and projection, projections from the World Bank show increasing trends over the uh, next 30 years until 2015. Sorry, it was the last slide, but it's okay. Um, on, although lower than, um, than uh, their share in 2016, APEC economies are still expected to be responsible for a significant 37 waste in 2015. And um, according to data, again, from the World Bank, about 59% of waste in APEC economies was mismanaged, that is uh, dumped into unspecified, unspecified um, landfills, open dumps, waterways, or other unaccounted locations. And 66%, um, a large portion of this mismanaged waste uh, arose from developing APEC economies. And um, these uh, waste, mismanaged waste, uh, bear large costs to health and economy. Uh, poorly managed waste um, apparently com contaminates uh, the oceans, breeds diseases, releases harmful greenhouse gases and litters landscapes. Um, for example, uh, mismanaged waste, including plastics, are dumped into uh, inland waterways which then empty into the oceans. And um, a 2017 study found that about 90% of the ocean's plastic comes from 10 rivers, of which six flow through uh, APEC economies. And uh, according to uh, a research in uh, 2011, all these plastics in the oceans are expected to cost uh, 1.3 billion US dollar per annum to the tour tourism, fishing and shipping industries in the APEC region. And although the health cost of missed uh, managed waste has not been calculated for the APEC region, a recent work um, in uh, 2019 found that um, about 400,000 to 1 million re residents in developing economies die every year due to the harmful effects of mismanaged uh, plastic waste. Next slide, please. Uh, not just harmful to health, uh, mismanaged wa waste is also e economically inefficient. Uh, a study in 2016 of five APEC economies, namely China, Indonesia, the Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam, found that uh, mismanaged household waste cost uh, the economy approximately uh, three, uh, 375 US dollar per ton. And um, the same uh, a study, another study in 2018 of the same region um, show that implementing an integrated uh, waste management system for the same region of five um, economies would cost only 50 to 100 US dollar per ton, and is therefore at least four times more economical than um, the cost of mismanaged um, household waste. And also waste is not um, supportive of, fut of future economic growth since resource security and efficiency are necessary for economic resilience. Um, uh, next slide, please. Thank you. So um, the apparently the direct impact of waste on uh, livelihoods and the economy are well known and self evident. Uh, but the waste we throw away is also coming around, including in our food. Um, economies, firms, uh, and households often practice a linear model of production that uh, follows a take make and dispose pattern. Uh, and in this linear uh, model, uh, raw materials uh, are extracted from nature, uh, transformed into products and consumed. 
and un any unneeded byproducts or residual residual matter are then disposed as waste. Now the circular economy, on the other hand, closes the loop so that almost no residual re residual waste uh, is released into the environment. Um, next slide, please. So this is the most extensive, in this most extensive form, the circular economy comprises 10 stages uh, shown as the 9R uh, framework. Uh, the reason why it's uh, 9R instead of 10 is that we have a R0 step that is refuse. Uh, basically, the strategy of refusing is to avoid the use of raw materials by abandoning the function of the product. For example, avoid packaging where possible. Uh, these are the stand stages, uh, the 9R framework of uh, circular economy. Uh, I would give some example of, uh, uh, for example, re rethink. Uh, an example of rethinking is um, share the shared use of products like vehicles, uh, washing machines. Basically, trying to make the use of a product more intensive. Um, reduce, uh, reuse, uh, or probably something we're familiar with. Uh, repair is something uh, I guess is familiar in daily life, but we um, may uh, underestimate repair as uh, a strategy. Basically, uh, we try to repair a defective product so that it could be used uh, for its original function. Um, refurbish and remanufacturing uh, are the same strategies, but on an upgraded uh, level, for example. Uh, instead of repairing a um, defective part of uh, a, a product, instead of, an, of buying a new product, refurbishing um, involves redesigning and restoring an old product. Uh, for example, refurbish an electronics product by replacing the old parts with the new ones. Repurpose uh, involves reusing functional discarded parts to manufacture a new product with a different function. Uh, for example, using a functional lap a part of a laptop to manufacture a digital pen. Uh, the, la the last um, stages of uh, the 9R framework in includes uh, recycle and uh, recover. So as much as we're familiar with recycle, Recover basically uh, involves, um, for example, using the heat from, uh, from combustion to drive a gener uh, generators to produce uh, electricity. So basically um, using leftover material and um, recover energy. Next slide, please. So uh, pursuing the creation of um, our circular economy has its benefits as well as barriers. So um, it uh, pursuing uh, our, our circular economy has uh, three main benefits. The first one is that uh, an economy or a region would become less dependent on external sources uh, or uh, of materials. Um, population growth and increasing affluence have strained the supply of raw materials, while natural disasters and trade tensions have demonstrated the vulnerability of supply chains to external shocks. So adopting a circular economy would reduce uncertainties over the domestic supply of scarce resources. The second advantage of a circular economy is um, the generation of new types of employment and businesses. New business model could emerge from existing businesses that tweak their practices uh, to be more envir environmentally friendly. For example, a milk company that collects uh, milk bottles from customers for reuse or a phone manufacturer that processes old phones uh, for retrieval of usable parts. Uh, the European uh, Commission ex expects our circular economy to generate 
uh, nearly 600,000 new jobs within Europe uh, in areas like product development, research, innovative designs and business models. And the third major benefit of a circular economy lies in the potential um, reduction in environmental uh, degradation. Uh, the over-reliance uh, on uh, of economic growth on natural resources has driven an, an uh, unsustainable demand for raw materials. And without any intervention, the uh, United Nations Environment, Environment Program expects a 200% increase in the consumption of minerals, fossil fuels, and ores between 2000 and uh, 2015. And this circular economy provides opportunities for reducing the pressure on natural resources, not only through uh, sharing and recycling, but also by expanding the life cycle of products and their parts through the reuse, repair, refurbishment, remanufacture, and repurpose. Um, on the other hand, despite the benefits, there are evident uh, barriers to setting up a circular economy. Uh, the first, uh, probably most um, uh, observable uh, barrier is the high upfront cost in um, expected in the short run when uh, revamping business practices and investing in necessary infrastructure. Uh, the second uh, barrier uh, points to how a, a circular economy will, um, will lead uh, to a more complex international supply chains because resources flow in both directions. Uh, for this, greater cooperation across businesses would allow for better management of these supply chains. Uh, the area in addition to our circular economy requires the sharing of smart infrastructure and advanced technologies that is often hindered by weak intellectual property rights and data privacy concerns. And finally, uh, the profitability of circular economy requires a strong demand from consumers. Uh, which only arise uh, if consumers are more and better informed about the concept uh, and can easily recognize our business circularity. Next slide, please. So um, the COVID pandemic apparently uh, highlighted the world's interconnect uh, interconnectedness and it showed how a virus can quickly circle the globe and how policy decisions made years ago can affect us now. So during the, uh, the pandemic, um, it was apparently a time for businesses and governments to rethink traditional business models. And um, firms, uh, res uh, results, research results have shown that firms that apply circular economy principles have shown their ability to address short-term supply shortages while reducing waste. Uh, here are the five uh, business models for circular economy. So rethinking business models in terms of the circular economy presents opportunities for efficiency, innovation, and sustainability. Um, for example, we have uh, one, uh, the first business model is sharing platforms, basically facilitate access to and uh, use and the shared use of underutilized products. Uh, libraries are uh, one of the most traditional form uh, or example of sharing platform or laundromats are another. And, um, some industries have also adopted rentals as their business model. For example, bike sharing, uh, ride hailing, or uh, coal living and uh, co-working space provides uh, uh, arrangements for people to share limited living and working spaces, reducing the demand for real estate. The second model um, is um, product as a service. 
basically focusing on maximum maximizing the users the user uh, derived from a product rather than the number of physical units of a product sold. Uh, this incentivizes firms to build products that are more durable and flexible for future maintenance and upgrades. Um, unlike sharing platforms, product as a service clients subscribe to a service from the seller, uh, which means they would have the access to the services on demand, for example, uh, Netflix or Spotify. Uh, the third model, a business model, uh, is circular supplies. Uh, Businesses have implemented the idea, this idea uh, by designing products that are recyclable and reusable. Um, waste can be repurposed. For example, empty pasta, uh, pasta sauce bottles could be used as a pen holders, uh, while old fabric could be stitched into bags and purposes. The fourth uh, business model uh, is product life extension which is another strategy to support the transition to a, uh, to a circular economy. It entails um, efforts to prolong the, use, uh, the, the useful life of uh, an item to reduce the demand for a product. And the final um, business model uh, is resource recovery, uh, which reduces waste by utilizing manufacturing byproducts from other production processes. And the concept of resource recovery does not have to be constrained to the same industry. For example, uh, Nike captures waste in other sectors and incorporates uh, the waste into their production processes. For example, plastic waste from single-use packaging such as plastic bottles can be processed into polyester fabric which can be used in textile manufacturing. In fact, in 28, um, 2018, 75% of all shoes and apparels produced by Nike contain some form of recycled material. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, the circular economy uh, is dependent on international trade with some economies and um, the OECD even going as far as to consider a trade as a fundamental aspect of the circular economy. And there are two apparent reasons for this. Uh, the first is scale and uh, specialization. And the second is intercon interconnectedness. Uh, first is the need for scale. scale. At various uh, stages, of their circular economy, there is a need for experts and technologies specializing in uh, refurbishing, repurposing, or recycling used goods or recovering energy after all other options have been exhausted. And uh, at the economy level, the cost involved in building these ca uh, capabilities may be significant due to the lack of skill and the specializations needed. And trade provides business opportunities by enabling economies to use the specializations and innovations available to, in other economies and by providing them access to a larger market, market to benefit from economies of scale. Um, the second reason uh, has to do with inter the interconnectedness of global value uh, supply chains. In today's uh, highly globalized and dependent world economy, global supply uh, and value chains are deeply interlinked and uh, a major, a majority of products were, uh, are made of intermediate parts sourced from other economies. And as, as a result, the capacity of a business or industry to embrace circular economy will depend on the ability of its partners to abide by the same principles of circularity. And as trade in sustainable goods and services grow, some economies have strengthened their standards to support these industries, requiring that their trading partners uh, adopt similar standards. Yeah, next slide, please. 
Um, well, APEC apparently can contribute to the transition to a circular economy and regional cooperation has an apparent role. Um, some areas that APEC can work on are encouraging uh, the standardization of processes, technologies, and materials involved in the circular economy, uh, disseminating information about the circular economy, and um, elevating our circular economy related discussions to a higher level. Um, first, involving standardization, new technologies and circular economy infrastructure require that standardization needs to be in place to ensure common practice, common protocols across economies and businesses, and especially to maintain quality across highly globalized supply chains. Um, second, um, the region uh, needs to encourage adoption of uh, circular practices and um, to do that, there is a need to develop policies that incentivize businesses to think about the sustainability of their product or service at all points along the supply chain and across the whole duration of the, <clears throat> of the product life cycle, excuse me. And um, the third uh, policy consideration involved uh, setting a credible benchmark. Um, it is necessary to measure the circular economy, to recognize progress and set global benchmarks that businesses and economies can work towards. Uh, some existing uh, indicators can be used to guide circular economy policies. For example, carbon, carbon emissions, life cycle analysis and resource intensity. Um, and uh, finally, uh, raising public awareness and education is critical. Uh, to encourage change, there is a need to change people's mindset, and that starts with education. Um, circular economy-oriented thinking should be introduced early at schools uh, to ensure students are equipped with the technical and creative skills necessary for the new economy. For example, in Finland, circular economy education begins very early. Uh, children are taught to think about food waste and uh, waste sorting in daycare centers. And uh, final slide, please. Thank you. So when should, when should the world transition? When should we act? And uh, apparently the COVID pandemic again has exacerbated the waste crisis, as well as um, highlighting how interconnected we are and uh, how influential, how impactful one economy's um, policy could be on others. And um, however, the COVID pandemic was also a chance for economies to rethink our ways towards uh, more sustainable development. Um, recovery, uh, recovery, recovery plans should not only be concerned about um, economic, um, reviving the economic output, but also towards building environmental sustainability. Yeah, that was uh, the end to my uh, presentation. Um, thank you for uh, attending and for your attention. I look forward to more questions in the Q&A and the discussion that follows. Thank you.